this report is the first time that the full impact of all kinds of pollution have been put together in, in, in one spot. And what we've done is we've looked at overall, what's the total impact that we're having? Because we look at pollution as something that we're doing, we're putting out into the world that's making others sick. And we wanted to calculate how big that amount of disease uh, is. And it's stuff that you know, we as humans are doing sometimes inadvertently, mostly inadvertently, to our fellow human beings and especially to our children. The scale is enormous, it's absolutely stupendous. Nine million deaths from this analysis. Nine million deaths is 16% of all of the deaths that occurred. Our window was 2015. We're using data from IHME and WHO for deaths and risk factors in 2015. So nine million deaths is one in every six deaths that occurred um, and pollution is responsible. Pollution impact is mostly a development issue. The majority of these deaths occur in the poorer countries of the world. Low middle income and upper middle income countries account for 92% of that nine million deaths. There are some deaths that occur in, in the West and they're mostly related to urban air pollution. So we, you know, we in London and the US do have some issues with pollution still, but we've mostly accounted for it. And it's really something now that we ought to be concerned about for our fellows who are living in, in uh, the developing world. Because people are getting sick and dying before they should, before they've had their full productivity, there's a cost to the economy. And we calculated this in several ways. The one that's most compelling, in my opinion, is looking at the lost productivity of people um, who are not capable of contributing fully and pr producing you know, strong and robust economies. That number is as much as 2% of GDP in, in uh, low and middle income countries. We haven't looked at it because we don't really suffer from it so much anymore in the West. And overseas, um, there are problems because pollution falls between environment agencies and health agencies and industry and transport. So different silos of governments traditionally don't talk very well to each other. But I think the main reason that countries have not looked at this enough is they're just not aware of how big an impact it has. And I've met in the last year with um, three or four ministers of health and every time I've done so and sat down and pulled out their death statistics, they're absolutely flabbergasted. They just have no idea that pollution is causing so much of the disease burden that's occurring in their countries. And I think health ministries need to be a place that then coalesce all these other indus industry, industry and transport and environment and finance, they all need to come together to deal with it. And, and that's the strategy that we, we see lacking at the moment. So right now the trend is bad. You know, air pollution is getting worse. Um, there are some good results. There are some good um, uh, success stories. Uh, for example, Bangkok air pollution has improved substantially. Mexico City used to be the most polluted city in the world and it's also improved substantially. So there are success stories out there. But overall, th so many places have not dealt with this problem adequately and the trend is going in the wrong direction. And you know, there's also some analysis that looks at the number of cities doubling by 2050. So I think without proper controls, we'll just see these problems get worse and worse. Now, now there are some um, indications that this agenda is moving forward in the right way. The United Nations Environmental Assembly, for the first time, will look at pollution at scale. The World Bank has adopted pollution as a focal area. There's more, it's beginning to be more attention to this. Difford is actually looking at this issue to see whether it should become a priority. 
there's currently no budget monies in any overseas development assistance allocated to pollution right now. But people are interested in it. They see it as an issue. And this, I think we're looking, at least, even if the impact hasn't been made yet, we're thinking about this as an issue. This is all based around an assumption called the environmental Kuznets curve, which says that economies need to go through a polluting phase until they get robust enough to be able to control their pollution. And this is put forward often by industrialists to their governments of the reason why they shouldn't you know, have expensive pollution controls. And we looked at the literature all through to see whether this was true or not. And there's absolutely no evidence for it. In fact, there's some evidence that says well-controlled industries that are not polluting end up being more successful. And certainly, from an, from an economist's perspective, looking at national economies, when you factor in the externalities of lost productivity and health costs into development plans, I think you would naturally be drawing the line for pollution control at a much higher level than we currently do. In the report, we spent a lot of time and energy knocking this old myth on the head and saying, this is a busted myth. We should not automatically be thinking of this. Let's look at it in a deeper way and really make sure we're including externalities when we're making decisions about whether we'll let industries just go haywire. And I think when that happens, we'll end up with a much safer and cleaner world because it will make economic sense. This is you know, one of the key recommendations from the report is we would like to see the development community adopt this as a focal area. We think that um, bringing some ODA attention to this will reap enormous rewards. And it's rewards in terms of health, but also in terms of improved economic performance, and also in terms of equity. A lot of the pollution problems that are out there are impacting the disadvantaged or women and children, um, so, and, or, or indigenous communities. So focusing on pollution will have knock-on benefits to those groups. It also has knock-on benefits to climate change. Um, much of the overlap between pollution and climate change is, is quite clear, and it will get clearer as time goes on. So I think if it were to become a focal area for development community, it, it just has an enormous set of co-benefits. In general, I think if the DFID community sees some particular pollution-related issue in countries where they're working, get in touch with us. You know, the Global Alliance on Health and Pollution is an association of many, many different governments and a lot of the international community, World Bank, all the UN agencies and so on. So it's a great place to be able to bring attention to a specific issue and hopefully to generate resources, but certainly to find technical capacity and network in for some strategic solution. And we're focused on fixing the problem at the Global Alliance. So, you know, let's do that together.